Hello investors and welcome back to Just Randy Stocks. We're going to make this a quick one. Sundial update. I want to go through what happened in the last week. First, Sundial Growers announced that they have the plans to acquire and they will vote in December. Most likely this complete transaction will take place in December. Now this transaction did, it's an all stock transaction which dilutes Sundial shareholders further. But the long term plan should be in Sundial's benefit. Now, I will say, CEO Zach, we need to do some buybacks. We got to do some buybacks because you can't dilute shareholders any further. And I do believe he's trying to get a sustainable business model, but we've got to push past this dollar mark. So that's another risk with this play. But a week later, seven days later, we're still talking about Sundial getting into the alcohol business. So not everybody knows this, believe it or not, uh, a week afterwards. And We've got some analysts that are already starting to adjust but not publish their price targets. You can see here, they're moving their price targets from $0.75 cents to $0.80. Cents. So just keep that in mind as you look to enter this. It is a penny stock, highly volatile. I cannot be held accountable for any risk that you take. Just know that when I talk about these stocks, I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I've got a 50 cent cost average, so it's easy to say with a 50 cent cost average to talk about buying at 65.76 or 64 cents. But here's my case. I'm looking at the RSI indicator. And what I want it to do is I want it to revisit this 30 down here. So this median area right here, you know, it's, it's trending down. The RSI is a trending indicator but typically when it visits this lower 30 and dips below, it signals a buy. There's a lot of automation out there. There's bots that help people buy uh, stocks at key support levels. So just to revisit this, yes, I do have a position in Sundial, but this is no, no, no way am I trying to pitch pump, you know, but I'm showing you what the charts say. And obviously you don't attain channel growth by giving people bad information. So in the uh, Bollinger Band, two standard deviations up and down, you can see it hasn't visited the lower portion of this cloud, the standard deviation down. So I would say you want it to visit that area. I would put in an order. You, it's to your money's your money. But $0.64 cents is where I believe uh, you could put in an order. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If you want to mitigate your risk. I would say... You are buying too high if you place an order over six sixty five seventy six. I just think it's anything above that would be too high. That's why I said in my last video, sixty five and below. You could buy it under seventy if you want to. Now, here's why I am so strongly convicted on not only analysts moving their price targets. We've got generally strong Q three earnings, but a twenty twenty. 20, at least 20% movement up in the price target after their Q3 or leading up to their Q3, 161.8 million for their Spirit Leaf brand. That's all we can recognize. But as of October 6th, Zach put this out. I just don't understand why the price movement isn't. It's got to be ma manipulation in the market. Last three months. Now, this is not the Q3 numbers. January, February, March. April, May, June. So that's Q2. We're, we're getting a little bit of Q2 and Q3 mix. This is June to August. So June, July, and August. So we're missing a month in here, but I will say it's over $100 million, if I'm reading this correctly, for the Spirit Leaf brand. Now, if we go into ticker terminal and we look at the last few quarters, now that's Canadian dollars. So I've got this also in Canadian dollars so it doesn't confuse anybody. I wanna keep the numbers relatively close. Over $100 million, 14 million, 20 million, 12 million, 13 million. You can see why the price is where it's at right now because it's been trending down. The revenue market share, market share has been a problem. They needed the retail, uh, they needed the retail space. They needed to acquire retail and that's what they did with the Spirit Leaf brand. A hundred million, <laughs> over a hundred million is what I think I'm looking at that we're going to be expecting to bring in. 
most of these numbers are improving. Gross margins are improving. If you look at these numbers, go in ticker terminal, check out the numbers. Now, this is an all-stock transaction, which I don't believe it impacts their cash. So they keep their cash. It's, they dilute shareholders further, right? So I get that. But even cash is growing. Cash equivalents. Cash flow. Now, net income is negative, right? I mean, it, it's not good, right? It's, they're not profitable. I'm not sure when they'll become profitable. But the whole reason that they acquired this liquor business is so they could basically, you know, have a steady stream of income, destroy the other cannabis businesses by attaining uh, an equity stake in Nova, which is a value brand. And basically in here, in this chart, it shows that they will be the largest. They will have the largest retail footprint of 170 locations, uh, Sundial and Nova, once they consolidate. So yes, this isn't going to happen till next year, but what will it take to get this over a dollar? I see good things happening with Sundial. That's all I got. I'm going to turn it back over to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Emily, I know you're tracking Sundial growers today. I think they just made an acquisition in the liquor and cab cannabis space. Can you tell us about that? That's right, Jared. And we have seen Sundial Grower stock, one of the top trending tickers on the Yahoo Finance website and app all day today. It's also been a meme stock, one of those Reddit Wall Street bets favorites over the past couple of months as well. But it does have some positive corporate news that it's trading on this afternoon. Now, namely, Sundial Growers did announce that it agreed to purchase Alcana, which is a Canadian pot and liquor retailer for the equivalent of about 276 million US dollars in an all stock transaction. Now, this is potentially a lucrative deal here for Sundial in expanding its retail footprint. Alcana is Canada's largest private liquor retailer and has about 171 in-person locations. Now, some Wall Street analysts also struck an upbeat tone on this deal. CIBC analyst John Zamparo wrote in a note that this agreement, quote, comes as somewhat as a surprise, but the business is a strategic fit with Sundial's existing retail platform, particularly in cannabis and acquisitive nature. Now, should note that Sundial shares are up nearly 50% so far for the year to date. Most of that spike came earlier this year amid that initial meme stock frenzy, though we should also note that shares of Sundial are still down about 4.5% today, even with today's jump, Jared.